Hello, this is Bill Kerrigan. I am recording today on Father's Day, June 19th, 2022. And this is the first video of, I hope, several about my father's father. Uh, in honor of my own father's uh, today, I uh, made this video about his father. Um, and uh, let me go ahead and get beginning. I, I, I never met my father's father. He passed away on August 29th, 1967, more than three years before I was born. Last year, uh, my dad and I began talking about his father, and I decided to create this narrative out of those conversations. This is part one uh, of that narrative. In the photograph here, I'm riding on my dad's back about five or so years after my grandfather passed away. Uh, my grandfather was born in Hot Springs to Walter and Emma Kerrigan. Walter's occupation was listed as Iceman, and various records show that he usually worked as a team store or truck driver for the A.C. Jones Ice Company over several decades. Uh, Emma listed herself in a later uh, record as having no occupation, a housewife, mother. Uh, they both lived on St. George Street in the Fifth Ward of Hot Springs. Walter had been born in White County, Arkansas, while Emma uh, was born in Hot Springs. Uh, Dean Tatum Kerrigan was the sixth and last born child of Walter, who was 36 at the time, and Emma, who was aged 35. His older siblings included Ola, uh, 13 years old, John, 10, Audrey, 8, and Walter, who was six. Uh, one of his siblings had died very young, and th their name has been lost to history. Uh, many of the children had nicknames. Walters was uh, Ike after his middle name, Isaac. Uh, my grandfather also had a nickname, and he was called Mutt for reasons that were never made fully clear to his descendants. It's probably a name given to him when he was young because he was a sixth child and was shorter than the average Kerrigan, maybe only five foot four and five foot three. By all accounts, he was charismatic and personable, uh, so it was not strange in some ways that he embraced the nickname as a sign of affection instead of resenting it. Uh, the Kerrigans were all born and grew up in Hot Springs. The, the town was then, as it is today, a central Arkansas resort town built around its natural hot springs. Local Native American inhabitants reported that the springs held healing properties, and this belief has continued ever since. In 1832, the Hot Springs became the first location to gain federal reserve protection and was later incorporated into the national park system in 1921. In 1851, local inhabitants incorporated the town of Hot Springs, which would uh, become a resort destination. Here's a photo of the town from the early uh, 20, uh, 20th century. Um, now, when Mutt Kerrigan was just four years old, the family took a short vacation from Hot Springs to a place called Glassy Pew Creek. Creek. I'm not sure I pronounced it correctly. About seven miles or maybe eight miles outside of Hot Springs. We know about this trip uh, because details of it appeared in the newspaper the following day. Uh, and in fact, it was a, a tragic appearance. The only instance of the characters appearing on the front page of the local newspaper in Hot Springs that I could find was this 1912 uh, episode where their house, their home on St. George Street burned down completely. According to the newspaper, the family lo qua lo lost, quote, everything belonging to the family except what they wore on their trip to the country. Uh, fortunately, the characters were able to rebuild their home and recovered uh, from this sad day. Uh, now, one of the things that gave both the Kerrigans and the other residents Hot Spring much joy uh, was baseball. In 1886, the Chicago Cubs, then the Chicago White Stockings, invented the idea of preseason training and chose Hot Springs as a site of their fitness uh, preparation. Thereafter, many other clubs followed the organization to the town, le leading it to have the nickname of the birthplace of spring training. In this photograph taken in Hot Springs, Red Sox catcher Bill Kerrigan, a possible distant relation, uh, poses with Cy Young and other major league uh, players. Uh, now, one of the most uh, famous things that happened in Hot Springs, really like during baseball, happened on St. Patrick's Day in 1918, when Mutt was only nine years old, and of course he would have known about it, uh, and it would have uh, led to a lot of excitement, I think, amongst him and his brothers. Anyway, on that day, Babe Ruth, who had been, he had been playing in the field for the very first time. He had previously, of course, been a pitcher, and on that day, he hit one of the, uh, he hit a home run and became one of the greatest uh, it originally started the path which you become one of the greatest hitters of all time. The, uh, the hit uh, home run was measured at 573 feet. Um, so uh, when Mutt was just 12 years old, his older brothers, John and Ike, played in the outfield for one of the best local baseball teams in Hot Springs. John eventually went on to play for the St. Louis Cardinals organization, although he never made it to the major leagues. Uh, uh, Mutt Kerrigan would be a lifelong fan of baseball, both in Hot Springs and later when he moved to Texas, uh, where he would manage and participate in the life of baseball uh, quite a bit. 
Now, another thing that Hot Springs was known for, uh, in addition to baseball, was gambling. Uh, the town had a long history of illegal gambling, and Mutt's teenage years coincided with uh, one of those, kind of the house peak in that regard. Uh, there were about 10 casinos and many smaller betting houses in operation in the 1920s and 30s. The infamous gangster Al Capone uh, liked to visit Hot Springs. Uh, now, not much is known about his uh, school days, but it's clear that Mutt did finish uh, high school, and that was found on his military records, uh, and, but he also began working at a very early age. Uh, one of his earliest jobs working as a telegraph and telephone operator, and he would continue doing that job for, for quite a while. Anyway, it was good at his job, and he got to the point where he could actually understand Morse code just by hearing it without having to read and translate it. Uh, this led to some uh, kind of an exciting story that was passed down in the family. Uh, much of the wagering in the town was done on horse races, uh, not only those at the local racetrack, but on national horse races, you know, in other states, uh, whose results arrived via telegraph. Mutt's skill with the telegraph proved lucrative to him one day when he discovered that in an unusual circumstance, the result of mistake or overconfidence, the local gamblers were taking bets on horse races all the way up to the time that the results were posted, as opposed to stop taking bets when the actual race had finished. Uh, in whatever in distant state. And because of this, there was a time lag between uh, when the telegraph would uh, you know, announce the results of the actual race and uh, when the posting of it uh, would be done. And there was still betting that was going on in this, uh, in this period. So with several friends, ironically, his fellow Boy Scouts, uh, Mutt took advantage of this lapse in gambler judgment. Uh, he and his friends were careful to place losing bets as well as winning bets so as not to alert the mobsters running the operation. They knew it was important to disguise what they were doing because of what had recently happened to a casino manager who had altered the slot machines in Hot Springs to earn some additional money for himself. The attempt to cheat the organized crime leaders in Hot Springs led to that manager disappearing, eventually turning up dead in the local river. Thank goodness uh, Mutt and his friends were never caught, uh, at least as far as we know, uh, in this uh, episode. Now, uh, during the years of the Great Depression, Mutt maintained his job as a telephone operator. In 1934, he married his first wife, Sarah Elizabeth Taylor of Missouri. Their marriage lasted four years, ended in 1938, uh, when Mutt moved back and with his parents. Uh, the family uh, knows very little about what happened with this first marriage. It produced no children, and uh, by all accounts, according to, uh, I think, Mutt himself and certainly his, his, his children and his wife, his second wife, uh, he was not uh, you know, the most mature and probably not ready for uh, that first marriage, sadly. In any event, uh, another one of, of much uh, jobs during this period was uh, exercising horses at the local racetrack, probably Oaklawn Racetrack, which you can see pictured here and built in 1905. Uh, anyway, it was there at the racetrack that he would go on to meet Julia May or Judy Hart, who would eventually become his second wife and the mother of his two children, and a person that I knew very well and was very important to me. Anyway, they bonded over how much they both liked horses and went on dates uh, riding together. They also, according uh, to my father, went on dances together. That happened uh, both in Arkansas and then later in Texas, even a little bit, but was by all accounts a good dancer who uh, actually practiced for hours in front of the mirror to be good. Now, the turning point in the courtship, which did have its problems, uh, probably came uh, quite a bit later, uh, and uh, it coincided with uh, him actually disappearing for a full year. He drove off to Mexico in a new car, car he'd won with gambling money, maybe because he was worried he was going to be found out by the gamblers. For whatever reason, uh, he fled and uh, with his winnings, and the family never learned exactly what happened to him. What they do know is that a year later, he returned on a bus without the new car, and at that point, he had had a, a kind of turn of heart. He reconciled with uh, Judy uh, and agreed that he would end up participation in the gambling world and be a good husband and start a family. Now, uh, this was all also at a critical turning point in the history of the world. 1941 was a, a big year, of course. Uh, not only did you have Pearl Harbor and the beginning of uh, American entry into World War II, but also Mutt's father died uh, on May 17th. Uh, and he would uh, become engaged to Judy during this period. Uh, it was a big uh, transformative time period. Uh, now here uh, is an image of Mutt and, uh, and Judy. They were married in February 1942, and here is the very small uh, kind of uh, description of their marriage uh, that appeared in the newspaper. Uh, now, as soon as, uh, you know, very shortly after he, they were married, really no time for a big honeymoon, 
uh, he began his journey into the army because he had been drafted and he showed up at Camp Joseph Robinson in Little Rock on May the 20th, 1942. And uh, this seems like a good part, uh, moment to kind of end uh, the video part one. Uh, he is married, uh, going into the army and uh, that exciting story. And of course, the birth of first uh, Dean, uh, Michael Dean Kerrigan and then Dennis Lee Kerrigan, my father, are coming about very soon. And so that will be uh, the next video. But anyway, thank you very much for listening. And uh, I love you, uh, Dad, and I hope you have a great Father's Day.